Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about five ways to spot fake VPN reviews. Now VPNs are very popular and in fact one reason so many people talk about them, um, whether due to sponsorships or they even make entire businesses around them, um, is because they make good affiliate programs and it's also easy to kind of review them um, in a uh, biased manner and just kind of promote the highest bidder the ones that pay them the most this is why vpn review sites are a dime a dozen that's one reason why they have a pretty bad reputation and it can be hard for the basic consumer to decide you know if a vpn review is legitimate like those on my channel or if it's a bias review fake review scam review whatever you want to call it so in this video i'm going to helping you to just decide on your own how to spot a fake review how to tell if a vpn review is legitimate whether on youtube or elsewhere on the internet now i wouldn't really recommend trusting people on reddit or discord if you go to them and ask them for their opinions chances are they're going to tell you the vpn they use and most people in the vpn community are very tribalistic and in fact most discords i actually don't really take a part of anymore because there's so much toxicity and tribalism uh, around vpns and people who have their favorite vpn really don't like any other ones but it's at the same time you can't really trust vpn reviews themselves right so like how can you spot a fake vpn review if you're not just relying on a peer-to-peer -peer basis of reviews where people could be biased as well fortunately there are some really easy metrics to define uh, a fake review number one is that if the review you're reading isn't really beholden to a review system is your review kind of based on numbers uh if a review has a number based system a system of review a system of criteria chances are it's already miles ahead of other reviews out there and is more objective now if you look at most review sites out there with vpns most of them don't even have a review system Take, for example, a website called VPN Mentor. Now, VPN Mentor has already kind of admitted, if you do some basic clicking around on the website, that it's owned by Cape, which owns VPNs Express and CyberGhost. However, this site was never a reputable source for VPN reviews at any point, really. And it more or less has just shifted rankings around because a VPN company decided to go ahead and buy it. In some ways, I wonder why other VPNs hadn't thought to do the same thing, since these people on this website clearly only ever cared about money. But take, for example, right now on the website, if you look at their top rated VPN being ExpressVPN, they have four system of metric being features, easy use pricing and reliability slash support. Number one, I don't know why reliability and support are one category and the other categories are so basic as of to be so broad, it's unclear of really what they're looking at. Not only that, but if you look at comparative reviews between something like ExpressVPN, which is around $100 a year, um, $13 a month being one of the most expensive VPNs hands down, you could see that they actually rated TorGuard as a more expensive VPN option. This is, even without discount codes, TorGuard is $60 a year, uh, around $10 a month, and that's still cheaper than ExpressVPN's basic plan. Um, that said, if you do get the streaming bundle, it is a little bit more pricey, but almost any affiliate can make promo codes to reduce the prices by 50%. So the fact that VPN Mentor is claiming ExpressVPN is somehow cheaper than TorGuard is just a gross misrepresentation and a straight out lie. Not only that, but it's not like they couldn't create the code themselves since they clearly are an affiliate. If you click on this bucket, it does seem to be an affiliate link. Um, so it's just the whole website review system is total garbage and this is just one example out of hundreds of websites just like this one most of them don't have metrics they're using in each review or if they do they're not even numbered by points so it's hard to create a comparative system of measurement for vpns if there's no system of measurement at all Imagine trying to make a house if you didn't have a system of measurement. Imagine trying to uh, make a door fit if you didn't have a measuring tape. Imagine trying to do anything in the building process if you didn't use measurements. That's how I imagine VPN reviews to be without review systems. They simply just don't hold up. Just like a house would fall down if you stood on it or actually used it. 
So on my channel, the way I look at reviews is that they have to have a metric of comparison. Each one of my reviews is done the same way. Each review has the same points looked at for each VPN, and then they're stacked against one another to see who can do the best. I've tried to create my review system to mirror what people really want from a VPN, whether that be affordability, fast speeds, which services they work with with streaming compatibility, and how well the company is kind of doing things behind the scenes in terms of things privacy customers value. Value. So with these metrics of comparison, I've been able to make a VPN review system that makes my reviews inherently more objective. However, almost every single re VPN reviewer out there doesn't have a metric system like this to make their VPN reviews and subsequently they are completely biased. And most of the time this is on purpose. VPN reviewers don't really want a metric of comparison because then it would make it much more easy to see that the reviews aren't real. Most VPN reviewers at the end of the day or VPN reviews themselves are mostly just a couple pros and cons inflating the pros and take for example this review. Uh, it says that one of the cons, well first of all they list all these pros in NordVPN. I'm not trying to shit on Nord or anything like that, but just showing this review has some very big faults. One of the cons is that discounts only exist for longer subscriptions. But when you look at this website's little table at the top, the way they describe the cost is not really long term. They describe it month to month. So that's kind of misleading already. But if we look into more detail of the description of the con, they say here that beginning with their one month plan at $12, going all the way to $329 per month, um, NordVPN has a very clear pricing policy with no hidden fees. Uh, that said, if you look at their image, you can see that it says $59 for the first year. The hidden fee is that after the first year or second year, the price does increase after that. And at the time of this review or even in this picture, the pricing only included the information in that asterisk. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's because NordVPN actually had to change it. There was some legal stuff going on, perhaps, or something behind the scenes. But as you can see now, the pricing is much more transparent, clearly telling you the price after the term ends. So even their little analysis here that is they somehow made it into a pro, the con, they made it into a pro. So really, if we take away this, this as a con, since they kind of made it into a pro, uh, really the only con for Nord, I guess, is uh, not having refunds on the App Store. Come on, there's got to be a little bit more cons than that. I mean, even though NordVPN is rated a decent VPN on my channel, it's rated number four. It does have some faults, like for the fact that there is that price increase. It could have more simultaneous connections. The website could be more transparent with its customers, like not include timers. Additionally, it could add a Linux UI, add port forwarding, uh, improve some of the privacy backend things, like using open source analytics, passing the various tests that include no trackers on their website, and I mean, those would be some good things to do. And this review mentions nothing of those things because it's not really meant to have cons. For the VPNs they do like, they just fill it full of pros and they don't mention any cons. And for the viewer, they could come away without knowing some of the bad things about the VPNs. That's why even with the VPNs I do like, I do mention some of the cons and make sure to list out everything that they don't have. And with the VPNs, that I don't like. I also mentioned some of the good things too. Now, another kind of failure of VPN reviews and VPN reviewers is that they might create a system, but they create a faulty one at that. And this could be due to ignorance, maybe just not knowing what makes a good VPN or that they have biased preferences. I know a couple of VPN reviewers on YouTube and a couple of websites where they kind of pick and choose on what they think consumers value when in fact consumers don't necessarily value those things or they forget some things that consumers do value. I know a couple of VPN reviewers who specifically don't mention price in any of the review, and they don't even mention stream compatibility. Already, this is cutting out a lot of things people value. People sometimes have a strict budget and they wanna buy a VPN that's not gonna afford, uh, hurt their wallet, or they wanna buy a VPN that works with some of their favorite streaming services. If you're purposely not mentioning these things in your reviews, then it means that your reviews already are kind of biased based on your individual preferences and not what people are actually looking looking for. Or there are some reviewers out there, some websites where they exclusively only review VPNs who are not based in the United States or based in a certain subsect of countries they define as 
secure and private, when in fact they're not lawyers and they don't really know anything about the legal practices around the world. Just because you're using a VPN based in Sweden or something like that doesn't mean that you're safe from the FBI if they come knocking on your door and break down your door because that VPN gave them up a couple uh, details about metadata from your account. Maybe they didn't collect logs or anything like that, but they collected some information about you that could identify you to the police and now you're pretty much screwed. Now, another way we can identify fake reviews is inflated stats. This is primarily uh, something for YouTube. If you're finding a VPN reviewer that is uh, newer than me, uh, I don't mean to sound like I'm being a condescending or arrogant or anything like that, but I've made my channels exclusively on VPN reviews and I've had pretty good success here on YouTube, but I've never bought any views or bought any subscribers and attaining 30,000 subscribers for a channel exclusively based on objective VPN reviews that are for the most part pretty boring because each video goes the same way because each video is objectively based on the same system which kind of does make the videos more boring but that's how it goes for actual content if you find a VPN review channel that is newer than mine and double or triple the amount of subscribers that I have something's a little fishy chances are those people might be buying subscribers or views or they might actually be part of a larger conglomerate company some kind of media company that could even be owned by a vpn see this is the problem with review sites it's pretty legit comprehensive i mean a lot of affiliate links whatever nice quality whatever a lot of subs supposedly because it's got very linear growth perfectly to be honest every very consistently i should say subscribers it's a couple of hundred at a time or something yeah so the legitimate growth comes in spikes started using bots in april 2020 from as far as i can tell and everything since yeah everything's <laughs> everything since the bot wow good site legitimate good source I suspect many of these on YouTube that compete with me are actually owned by VPNs or marketing companies as well. And I've even made videos in the past on some VPN channels that use the same voice actor for five or six or even like 10 channels are owned probably by the same guy, same company, could even be owned by a VPN. None of these channels tell you that they're having other channels or other opinions and they're all just promoting the same VPNs that offer high commission rates and it's pretty corrupt. Anyways guys, those are some of my thoughts on the VPN review industry and five easy ways to find and identify fake VPN reviews. And if you guys like this video, let me know down in the comments down below and I'll see you again very soon.